Welcome to the show, guys. Joseph Robert Camo, the fantasy football counselor in the studio online here with Tim, a.k.a. the bald man. Hi, everybody. Yes, I am not in studio with Joe. I'm at home with my creepy picture. Yeah, do you want to... What happened to your other creepy picture? You had this... Oh, it's still here. I just moved it. I thought it was time for something different. Oh, man. He had this one... If you guys didn't know, he had this one creepy picture of this girl, and it was like... I can't explain it to you. It was just very creepy. (laughs) You would think it's a very cheap painting because it's a velvet one, but no, it's actually fairly valuable. Right. Uh, Today, we're talking about five overrated players, compliments of the bald guy. So this is about Tim. Tim, this is about you. We're we're thinking about you, and and I'm just going to weigh in. And I've got a couple of my overrated players I'll throw in as bonuses at the end, so make sure you guys stay tuned. But it's all about Tim. He's going to explain who these overrated fantasy football 22 players are and why they are overrated. Yeah, Yeah, let's not call them overrated. I'm going to say overpriced. Yes. You know, to me, they're not overrated. They're just they're priced a little high. So unfortunately, most of these are going to be like your first round guys. But in some sense, I think that's a good thing because we're trying to save you from wasting early round pick or whatever. Right. Some of these guys should still go in the first round, just maybe a little later than what they're going right now. All right. So we're going to go over that. And again, like I said, I've got some bonuses for you. So a couple of things before, if you haven't got it, yet, get the 16 round draft solution. It will help you guys crush your leagues linked it here below on YouTube video training, optimal players to draft in each round, everything you need sleepers, breakouts, everything in 16 rounds, use the code two twenty, save yourself 20%. So get that 16 rounds right here below. Um, another thing guys, and if you're in the car, go to the fantasy football council.com. You get there there. And again, same code tube 20. Now, Tim, I'm doing this new segment here at the beginning of every show. I'm doing story time with the counselor. And usually it's stories about like kind of what's going on in the industry. Like, you know, something that, you know, that's come up in the news, that's bothering me or some guy gets arrested or just a story about kind of what's relevant and what's current. But today, since you're on, we talked about it before. We want to kind of talk about real briefly here is, uh, you know, what shows are you watching? We'd like yeah. to know what give shows in- are watching. Give some insight to your personal life. Never mind all this other stuff. We talk about that crap all the time. Yeah. So we want to know what shows you're currently watching as well, guys, below. Tim, what are you currently watching right now? Okay. So I don't have cable per se. I go with Android and Netflix. So I'm actually on kind of this Canadiana kick right now, believe it or not. There's some weird shows out of Canada that are just crazy. So. Um, Oh my god, I'm gonna I'm gonna gap on the one. So they just did a spin-off of Letter Kenny. If you have never watched Letter Kenny, watch. give that a watch too. It's a really, really stupid slapstick humor comedy kind of crap, but funny as hell. Uh Letter Kenny is one. Then they did a spin-off called Shorzy, which is it's all based on hockey. And this this guy is just the ultimate trash talker. So check that out. Shorzy, S-H-O-R-E-S-E-Y or something like that. Shorzy, anyways, you'll look it up. Um and then there's another one that I just started watching today on Netflix that's out of Nova Scotia, which is on the East Coast. Um, what kind of boring uh, shows are these? I know. They're not like... See, wow. I, I don't go for the whole Hollywood hype, all this really great I production do. value and stuff. I don't care about that stuff. I, want, I just want a weird tale. I just want a story. I want top entertainment and these shows sound as bad. And I, I forgot to mention the elephant in the room right now. If you guys want watching on YouTube, what is that crap on your chin? It looks what do you t- look at this thing. This is a ama- look at it's so what long. These that? things are like two inches long, man. That's weird. Um, yeah, you I could call know. it my mangina. <laughs> I don't know. That's why I grab you by that and rip your head off with yeah, it. Yeah, anyway, you probably was- do, but for different reasons, <laughs> I'm just not saying. Oh. So listen, guys, I'm, I just finished Ozark and I'm watching Peaky Blinders because I did a poll and everybody, you know, on Instagram, you got to watch Peaky Blinders. It's good. I'm not throwing back in my seat yet. I'm, I think I'm on like season two, uh, halfway through season two. It, it's entertaining. And again, Ozark, really, really good show. Yeah. And for movies, I just watched uh, Jackass. I think it's 4.5. It's called just the crazy stuff they do, man. They did fire in the hole. Real, you know, and it was just, it was, uh, they all bent over and they took, um, hot sauce in their, in their bums. Oh my God. Yeah. 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 That was crazy. Yeah, they do some crazy stuff, man. I mean, I, I got out of the jackass thing a long time ago and they cooled it off by sticking a popsicle in there. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was weird, man. They are some sick bastards. They're crazy. Just the dirty stuff they're doing. It's wild. So yeah, I just, again, I don't really get like, squeamish about stuff i don't like whatever it is there's moments you want to kind of throw up in your yeah mouth. like they kind of lost me when they started doing like the pooping in the funnel sort of thing and then it led yeah. into the face the gas mask i was like 
you know what? This isn't really about um, just doing stupid, oh. funny stuff anymore. It's more about just being disgusting. And I kind of lost interest. All right. So let's get to the five overrated players. And below, guys, comment what shows are you guys watching? All right, Tim. So who's your first player here? Let's just dive into it. Leave a thumbs up, guys, if you're new to the channel and subscribe. So once again, it's it's an overpriced player because he's going number one overall in a lot of aspects. Jonathan Taylor. Love the guy. I think he's still got a very high ceiling, but they've got Naheem Himes. They brought in Philip Lindsay. You're nuts to think that these guys aren't going to get worked in or see a little more work maybe in Hines case. Philip Lindsay is a decent little bro. He's that guy, right? He's the guy you love to hate because hate when him. he was doing good and he had a great year, he had the little man syndrome, you would say. He'd always get yeah. up and he'd slam the ball. And he'd be like in your face. Yeah. Ah! So he's there. And he's going to be a pest, man. You got to look at it, you know? I think he'll be a pest. A lot of people are saying, no, nah, you know what? It's just there for depth. And that's no, 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 no. Pos it's possible, but no, he's there to get some work. Even if he only steals a few hundred yards and three to five touchdowns, it's going to take away from Taylor just enough to make him drop those four or five positions that I'm talking about. Like I said, he's, he's just a little overpriced. There's too many guys there now. I don't like it. Okay, let's talk facts here. The last time anybody went back to back as a running back, finishing on top two years in a row, was the guy named Priest Holmes. I think it was 2002, 2003. It's very rare and it's very unlikely Taylor will finish on top again. And like you said, the Philip Lindsay factor may or may not be a factor. I think it will be a little bit. And another thing, like if you look at the attempts, right? 332 attempts, 1,811 yards, 18 touchdowns. I mean, this was like a perfect year. It's 18. Yeah rushing touchdowns tim you know how hard that is to duplicate right so what i'm saying with Lindsay coming in now too is that the team is being smart and they're actually trying to prolong jonathan taylor's life here a little bit so i think Lindsay's going to get some work to try to save taylor make him more of a long-term player that's my thought process here like i said all he's got to do is lose a few hundred yards lose a few touchdowns and it drops him fairly significantly plus the change in quarterback man i mean there's just yeah. so many variables going on here why would you take him number one overall and another thing it's like like you said with the change of the quarterback i'll add this here is like matt ryan throws a lot and they will be airing the ball out a lot more they brought in alec pierce one of the best pure deep ball receivers out of this uh draft class at wide receiver he may or not may or not he might be a boomer bust. I like him as a, a wide receiver sleeper. There's an inside information there for you guys uh, for my research. But again, like I, again, it's very hard to duplicate those numbers. So that being said, there's other guys I think that could surpass him. Derrick Henry, Najee Harris. I still think that there's more stealing left to be had with Najee Harris and other guys could emerge. But to take him, again, just predicated on last year being number one, to say he's number one again, similar to Cooper Cup, it's, it's a bit of a stretch for me. So, yeah, I think he's a little overpriced. I still, I still think he's solid. If anyone's going to do it, I think it's Taylor. He's got youth. He's got strength. He's a good, he's good, great player, right? Good old. I, I, would, I would definitely look to take Taylor if he was there still uh, in the middle to late first round. But that, that's not going to happen. And that's why I'm just saying overpriced. All right. So, Taylor, again, am I saying don't draft him round one? Is Tim saying, uh, you know, I still would consider him, but I just think Henry and, not, you know, Najee have a bit of a higher ceiling. It's hard to fade them. Again, a part of a robust RB strategy, but just anticipate a decline. And again, we can't predict injuries, but again, what goes up must come down. Such a pinnacle year, and running backs are so prone to that injury. You never know, right? One injury, one wrong thing. And but again, you can't factor that in too much. We can't. No, predict. that's that's why I say Lindsay is there. I say they're trying to prevent him Perfect. from being injured. Yeah, they're they're trying to give him a little bit of rest by throwing Lindsay in the mix, I bet. All right. So again, this is Tim's list. Um, I, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Send I, me all the hate bitches. I don't care. Exactly. I, I give I, you my opinion. I think there's a bit of a de decline too. Um, all right. Next guy, Tim, who do you have? A guy you loved or used to love to hate. Now you love, I've always like loved him. him. Austin Eckler. Austin I, Eckler. Why yeah, is once, he a, once again, it's, it's not overrated. Believe I love this guy. He's not overrated. He is overpriced. I believe he's going second in most now. So I just don't like that. He had a great year, good numbers in the pass and the run. And your thing used to always be like, oh, he did so much in the passing and his running game sucked. Well, last year he put that to rest. He can run. He can run for an over five yard per carry average. Um, and I don't want to say he's injury prone like you normally do, but you got to face the facts. He has been injured quite a bit. 
Right. Uh, I just think it's it's a little too high of a price for this guy. I, I love him. I think he's a great talent. I, I love the fact that he's just as good in the receiving game as in the rushing. But as second overall, no. No. I see him sitting third overall on the list. I've got the can sheep Uh I got Taylor McCaffrey, which that's just absolutely ridiculous. You we'll guys are drinking the Kool-Aid on that. There's one. a couple, there's a couple bonuses on this one, but Eckler's there. And again, I think the talent is there. I think the PPR numbers are there. Um, you know, what I, what the problem I have is the attempts, 206 attempts. I know he makes it up in receptions, right? 206 attempts last year, under a thousand rushing, 4.4 yards per carry, 12 touchdowns. But what here's a problem here. Everyone's ranking him so high, but there's two things that no one's talking about. Number one, the major inflation here in rushing touchdowns. He had 12 rushing touchdowns, uh, rushing touchdowns, eight receiving touchdowns. That's a lot. I don't think he's going to duplicate those numbers. And number two, they brought in Isaiah Spiller. Now, I don't know how good Isaiah Spiller is going to, how that, how his skill set is going to translate in the NFL, but he was a pretty good running back in, in college. So again, other guys like, who was it? Kelly and Roundtree, they didn't get it done, you know? And I think they do want that guy that could plug in. I think they want that one, two point uh, punch. The chargers do again, Joshua Kelly didn't do it. Larry Roundtree didn't get it done, but Spiller, could be that beast, relatively violent runner, and again, could be that goal line guy. So I think there's going to be a major regression in that goal line work and even in receiving touchdowns for me. Way too overpriced, way too overrated overall. Because again, if you're drafting a running back in the first round, my opinion is you get a guy that's going to get the workload. Your Henrys, your Taylors, your Najis. Yeah, so once again, to build on what you're saying, those rushing touchdowns. Guys, before last year, his best year was three rushing touchdowns. Wow, I didn't even with, look at that. With almost 600 yards. So the yardage was there, but the touchdowns were not. Last hmm. year was an amazing anomaly for this guy. A little higher in the yardage for sure. Maybe not quite doubling it, but let's just hmm. say even if he doubled it and then doubled his best touchdowns, he still wouldn't get close to the number he had. So yeah. 12 rushing touchdowns. Look for that to come down. Look it's for that to even settle at eight would be nice. There, there's just so many reasons why I would not take him as the second or third overall pick. Right. And again, but, that was a really good point. Yeah. Mid to late first, I'm still all over this guy. I, I love him. I think he's a great talent. I think he's he's an amazing player. Nine touchdowns in four seasons, okay, combined. And then he got the 12 touchdowns in the one season. And a lot of people say, well, no, finally he's found his groove. He's hit his stride. He's hitting his gear. No, I, it was an anomaly year. He's a fifth-year player, guys. I mean, come on. Like, I'm to not. say he's hitting his stride now? Are you crazy? Way too overpriced. I'm fading Eckler completely. And again, I like him. He's great to the fantasy community. He's a nice guy. I like him. And I, like I personally him. don't care that he's nice to the fam to the fantasy family. I don't give a rat's ass. He's a football player. I love him as a football player. Yeah. All right. Well, I like the respect because a lot of people say, I hate your fantasy teams. I screw your fantasy team. This is that. I don't like and that. I, I'm all for that. I don't care. This is, we do, <laughs> we do a game within the game. That's, that's our job for me. They don't have to love fantasy football. You know, they need to be team players and I get it. It's our job to decipher it all. All right, Tim. So who do you have here as the third? I, I've mm -hmm. talked about this guy many times as well. Debo Samuel. It's just not there, guys. Like he has one great year, so everybody and I hate to use the term starts riding the D, but yeah, you start riding it hard. I mean, yeah. he is way overpriced. I don't expect anything like what he did last year. The fact that he had so much work in the rushing game, they've got Elijah Mitchell there, who unfortunately was, you know, missed several games last year. Maybe that'll happen again. Maybe it won't. But he is a very capable running back. He had almost a thousand yards, like. It's not going to be the same for Debo this year, no matter what. Yeah, the contract thing's a big thing for me. Um, again, we're recording this, you know, end of May, near the end of May. So Debo Samuel obviously wants to be, I don't know if you know this, Tim, if you heard the news, this is a while back, like a month or two ago, he said that he wants to be the highest non-quarterback player based Ridiculous. on what? One good year. Yeah. One good year. If you look at the years prior, Tim, nothing. I mean, he had 391 rec uh, receiving yards in 2020. 802 receiving yards the first year and then he has this anomaly year for him out of the three years anyway 1405 receiving yards six touchdowns uh receiving and he had those eight rushing touchdowns he was used more of a gadget player so i i don't know man it's just demanding too much shown too little you know yeah absolutely if he could come out again this year and do the same thing okay now he can make a case for being the highest priced receiver but still the highest priced in the game besides a quarterback 
even that's a tall ask, man. I mean, a lot of defensive players get paid pretty big bucks. Yeah. Um, another thing is like, if you look at Debo Samuel again, um, again, the, he's not going to be used the same way. That's a big thing with Elijah Mitchell come back. As you said, I just don't see that at all. And we need to see more. That's the bottom. We need to not see just, more. Not just that, but who's going to be quarterbacking? Who's going to be the starter? Is it going to be G, G all year who sucks? Is it going to be Trey Lance? You know, it's, it's a different, it's going to be a different team this year. I can feel it. Yeah. And this is the same debate last year. It's like quarterback, always a suspect situation, spreading the ball around, you know, maybe a Uke takes a step up this year. And again, everybody's riding his D now. It's like last year, everybody had a Uke ahead of him in the rankings. Everyone's like a Uke's better than Debo, this and that. They finally realized Debo is better. And now they're all riding Debo, but not realizing that his numbers were inflated last year. Right. So yeah, and yes. I think Garoppolo's never been that that amazing quarterback, man. I've never really cared for him that much. And then he doesn't I'm sure he doesn't throw a lot. I'm trying to look up his stats right now. Like I do not believe he's a high touchdown throwing quarterback. So even last year he had 20 touchdowns. He right. he just doesn't get it done. So if you lose the work in the rushing game, which you should not be doing anyways, what's going to make Debo such a high value? It's it's not there, guys. I think he's a great player. Like I said, just too early, too premature in his expectations. But again, do you blame Debo for wanting that type of money? This is a guy yeah. that's watching big contracts happen with guys like Tyreek Hill, Adams, and then the Christian Kirk big deal. What was that? Like <laughs> that was the most, million. That's the most asinine deal. So it's, it's a good thing you brought that up because that's yeah. just ridiculous. So I kind of see that aspect. It's like I'm Debo Samuel, right? And, and Debo Samuel is more gifted, I think, than Christian Kirk for sure. Uh, so, you know, it hurts when you see that type of deal happen. You're in the NFL. You want that. But I just think you want it a little prematurely. So we're going to have to see. I just think he's overpriced. I'm fading him. I'm not paying that price. I liked him last year when people were drafting Ayuk ahead of him. And I was stealing Debo. Great. Mm -hmm. I'll take him. But now that everyone's on him, way too overpriced. Yeah. So I'm just looking at Jimmy G's numbers really right now. And, oh, my God, this this guy's awful. He's He's only had, I want to say, one full year at quarterback out of out of seven or eight seasons he's only played 16 games once so his yeah. best year throwing touchdowns is 27 it's not there so it's not good at all take away the rushing work from from uh debo give it to elijah the throwing touchdowns aren't there nothing is there i mean he maxes at four thousand yards 27 touchdowns he's not an amazing quarterback it's not there for debo I'm assuming uh, Trey Lance should get the start. We're going to have to see how training camp goes. I, I think he will. But there's so much suspect at quarterback this year with a lot of teams. Trey Lance with the 49ers, is he getting the start? You look at Drew Locke with the Seahawks, him and Geno Smith, crap at quarterback. Then you got the Steelers. You got Kenny Pickett drafted. Is Mitch Trubisky going to start? There's a lot of weird situations here at quarterback where you're asking yourself, like, how are the how are the um, receivers going to benefit based on the uncertainty of the performance, even Trevor Lawrence being a top first overall pick last year had a bum type of year coming back this year. They signed Christian Kirk. You know, you got Davis Mills with the Texans, you know, what's happening there. Brandon cooks. He's like, do we draft Brandon cooks? I'm going to fade that situation. They drafted this uh, rookie in the Texans at John uh, Michi. I hope M E T C H I E the third, you know, I don't even consider him a sleeper breakout because I don't trust Davis Mills. So 49ers same way. Who's that quarterback? What's going on? Debo's a little overrated for me. Yeah. Overpriced. Man. One, All right. Right. No, in this case, I am saying overrated. overrated. <laughs> yeah. No, he is. All right. Who do, we, who do you got number four? Uh, some people will probably slap and piss and moan about this, but Devontae Adams, man. And I, I get it. He's an amazing talent. He, he is a great wide receiver. Carr can throw for a lot of yardage, blah, blah, blah. But Carr is not a high-throwing touchdown quarterback. So once again, I think he's in that 20 to 25 a year range. So why do you think all of a sudden Devontae is going to end up getting the lion's share there when it comes to throwing and touchdowns throwing? No, it, it's not going to happen. Carr always goes to his tight ends. They've got Josh Jacobs, who everybody might say, well, he's not as good as he was. But yeah, I mean, you're right. But even still, just the quarterback, the yardage might be there for Adams. I don't even know if it'll be as high as it used to be. There's just so many things that point to it not being as good of a year for him now that he's moved on, the change in quarterback, everything. And people can even bring up the old college crap. 
That was nine years ago, people. Who cares? It was college ball, which, you know, it's still a high level, but don't get me wrong. It's not the NFL. Boom. That's it. What, what more can I say? Let me ask you to say. That's weird. You're a math guy. You didn't even factor this in. Now, here's what blows my mind, okay? This is what blows my mind. This is why 16 rounds is the game changer. The mainstream sheep currently have him ranked third amongst wide receivers. This is literally copy and paste last year. They're not factoring the new team. They're not factoring a downgraded quarterback. And some people are debating it's not a downgraded quarterback. Yes, it is. And here, let's talk math, though, okay? Let's just talk math. And people are like, oh, well, that doesn't matter. It does matter. Listen to this. Last year's number one wide receiver was Renfro, who peaked at 128 targets. You're like, okay, yeah, big deal. Adams comes in, gets a full lion's share. For Adams to thrive, he had that connection with um, Rodgers, and he had 169 targets. Okay, stick with me mathematically. 169 targets, which equated to 123 receptions, 11 touchdowns. You're like, okay, go, Joe, that's fine. He can get 169 targets with, with Carr. Can he, though? If you look at, now listen to this, Tim, it gets better. You look at 2020, Carr's number one receiver was Waller, who had a great year in 2020. But he peaked. You, get, you know how many targets Waller had in 2020 as the I number mean, one? 120, 130? 145, which is good. And that's a tight end, folks. Okay, but that's great. You're like, well, Joe, that's pretty high. You know, I, here's the here's the kicker. You ready? Waller is still there, and so is Renfro, right? So when Adams got double coverage and he's got his reliable targets, he's going to reach out to them. I don't see 169 targets. I don't see 160 targets. I don't even see 150, maybe 140 for mm-hmm. Adams. And again, you are copying and pasting and predicated on 169 targets. I don't see it mathematically. It doesn't add up that this guy's going to thrive. I, I don't see it. Yeah, I he's he's still going to have a good year. The, there's no doubt in my mind. He's going to have a very good year. He's going to have high yardage. He's not going to have high touchdowns. He is fighting for yards and for receptions, like you say, with Waller, who is an amazing tight end. Carr loves his tight ends. Blah blah blah. It's not there, guys. Don't drink the Kool Aid on what these guys are telling you. Don't just look at what was last year. It's a totally different thing happening this year. And he's, again, just copied and pasted. He finished on top. Let's just slap slap him over here without even the thought process of could have, would have, should have, hypothetical, variable, different quarterback, different situation, volume count. There's no factoring in. It's just, let's just put him over there. But but Joe in college, these two were such an amazing connection. You know, I think it was almost 2,000 yards and 24 touchdowns in their last year together. Yeah, I don't care. How can you say that? I know, I get that. And here's the thing, right, Tim? Like last year, nobody was talking about Jamar Chase. They were, but not really. You know, I'm honoring St. Brown. All these guys that had breakouts and finished top 15, top 20, nobody was talking about. Now, all of a sudden, you're talking about, even though I'm is still a sleeper, it's just nobody really talked about him. So this year, there's a ton of wide receiver sleepers. That's why you guys got to subscribe and get 16 rounds. Guys like Alec Pierce, guys like Christian Watson. There's so many guys that like, you know, like Christian Watson, I think he's ranked like a nine, nine, you know, Alec Pierce, like 101 amongst wide receivers, but he's going into a direct drop and play as a wide receiver two with the Colts. And then Pittman hasn't proven to be a solid wide receiver one. So maybe Alec Pierce becomes a wide receiver one. We don't know. We know that Matt Ryan throws a lot, but he's ranked 101 right now. But it's like, again, you got to just project to where things are going to go. You know what I'm saying? Instead of just copying and pasting. Yeah, man. And you're great for looking at those guys that are much later. You know, this is focusing more on those first early second round guys. But yeah, you bring up some great points. You know, you always look at those receivers that are put in a position to excel. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Who's who's coming at number five here, Tim? You know, once again, I kind of changed up my list or I omitted some guys that I, I could have dumped on. I would have dumped on more guys even, but I thought you were going to dump on them. And you might. We're still going to hit on some other guys that aren't really on my list. And, and I'll let you deal with most of that. Let me go with Justin Jefferson. Again, great player, great receiver. But Thielen and Cook are there. And they only played 13 games last year, which might have inflated Jefferson just that little bit. Not a lot, guys. Just a little bit. I'm not dumping on him. I'm not saying he's going to have a huge drop off. But if Cook and Thielen can stay healthy, easily JJ drops 30 to 50 fantasy points. Very easily. You know, you give those touchdowns to Cook, you give a couple more throws and touchdowns to Thielen. Boom, those points are gone. I did this trusty sheet the other day. I don't know. Let, let it zoom in and focus. See these numbers, guys, right here? If you guys are in the car, 
you're like, what are these weird numbers? Okay, the target count on top right there. These are target counts between Thielen and Jefferson the first nine weeks. See how week one, 10, nine. So Thielen had 10 targets, Jefferson had nine. Then he had seven versus Jefferson's 10, 9, 11, 8, 7. I mean, he got him in that week, three to eight. And then back to 13, 14, 9, 4, 7, 4. So week eight and nine, Thielen actually had more targets than Jefferson in week eight and nine. Then later on this season, he got hurt. But I'm just using, you know, nine weeks as an example. So what I'm trying to make is this, as the camera focuses back in, what I'm trying to say is Jefferson's first round pick. And I, I, I get like he's the wide receiver one. He's young, he's youthful, he's talented, blah, blah, blah. But Thielen got hurt at the end of the season last year. And I'm just going to take Thielen later after round five because I'm maybe getting a wide receiver one. When you look at that target share there and you look at the touchdowns, they were pretty much on par. I think they both had the same amount of touchdowns. So I'm fading Jefferson and getting a running back and then just grabbing Thielen later. I may get less targets, more less touchdowns maybe, but I'm just getting the value later. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense to me, man. You're going to lose out on the yardage for sure when it comes to Thielen, but so what? You're going to gain it in the touchdowns. Even though they were matched last year, Thielen is a real go-to guy, very sure-handed. In the red zone, almost always seems to be a target. Absolutely. So again, I just think overpriced for me when I can get Thielen later. And if you look at the consensus rankings, the consensus, uh, Thielen is thir- sitting 37th in PPR, 3-7. And you well, always, when you say that, you don't look at overall, right? You look at amongst receivers. Wide, yes, amongst wide receivers. Like, that is ridiculous. That's like a seven, eight round pick, probably. And I was talking about this to you off the air. Like, okay, so let's use Higgins and Waddle as an example, right? Higgins has Chase. Chase is clearly the one. He's a great, phenomenal player, right? And you got Higgins sitting 13th amongst wide receivers. Then you got Waddle and Tyreek Hill. Okay, Tyreek Hill's obviously the superior wide receiver. And we don't really trust Tua. We don't know what we're getting from Tua. Yet the mainstream will rank Waddle at 14 and Thielen at 37, who could be a wide receiver one. There's even a, there's a 50% coin flip, maybe 60, 40 in Jefferson, maybe even 70, 30. But we know 90 to 10, right? That Tyreek is, the, you know, probably well, I'd say 80, 20. Because you never know. Tua could just gravitate to Waddle and Waddle becomes the one. But very unlikely, but I just don't even think the volume is going to be there for both Waddle and Tyreek to make them top 14, both of them together. It's crazy, man. Like there's so many wide receivers, like Cooks, like I said, with, with a suspect quarterback. Um, so many guys that Allen Robinson, what has he done? He's on the Rams now, you know, who knows, right? Um, ranked ahead of Thielen. It's sad, man. They're just like completely forgetting about Thielen. They don't like him, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he might not be that big time, high target, high yardage, and touchdowns. No, he's he's not that guy anymore. He's still a phenomenal player, and he's still going to give you great value. I think he's great value because Thielen finished twenty eighth last year. Again, only playing thirteen games, he was short on the yardage, seven hundred twenty six receiving yards, but he still had those ten touchdowns, which are on par with Jefferson, and he played less games. Jefferson played seventeen, Thielen played thirteen. So and and yeah. only about half of the yardage. What was it for what? Between him and uh, Jefferson. What do you mean yardage? I mean that Thielen only had half the yards that he did. Oh, to yeah. To get yeah. the same number of touchdowns, but half the yardage. Oh, I see what you're saying. So he's just a red zone target. Yeah, I know what you mean. Jefferson, yeah, and that's yeah. what I said. He's like, he's always, he's a very sure-handed, always go-to guy, especially in the red zone. Yeah. So there you have it, guys. Now let's talk about some other overrated players here. Make sure you guys are following on Instagram, Fantasy Football Counselor. Uh, let's dive into this here, guys. Um, some other just overrated. Let's just rapid fire a couple here that are overpriced, overrated. First one comes to mind to me. And again, I hate that we're agreeing on stuff, but I guess it's good that we're agreeing today because it's so blatantly obvious. But Christian McCaffrey playing two ga- uh, 10 games in the past two seasons, automatically plugged and played as the second running back off the board ahead of studs like Najee Harris. Derrick Henry, who was putting top 10 numbers in categories such as rushing yards and touchdowns in eight games. Derrick Henry played eight games, putting top 10 numbers in many categories. You know, even in PPR, I don't care. He gets a lot of touchdowns, the yardage. Still, McCaffrey second. And then you got Barkley at 14th. And they're both like injury guys that have been injured, right? Like, at least, you know, uh, Barkley finished the season last year. He was preserved for this season, improved O line. I don't know, man. Christian at two, Barkley at 14, where you're talking the same player. It blows my mind. Um, 
you're not talking the same. Really. So. CMC, oh, CMC is the offense on a, a fairly decent team, but I mean, CMC did it all. And, and to me, that's the problem. That's why he's injured now is he was carrying the load so much for a few years there that it just took its toll. So when he comes back, I don't expect much different unless they start resting him a little more. And I believe they said last year they were going to. Never Chub, did. So Chub, look Chub, what happened. Come on. Chuba Hubbard season, the backup there for running back. It's Chuba season. Chub, Chub, yeah. Chuba. I mean, I think you're pretty high on Saquon this year. I'm not as high. That team still sucks ass. I don't care about the improved O-line. They're just, they just suck in general. So I still, I'm not high on Saquon. Would I put him as the 14th running back? No, I think he deserves a little more respect than that. He is a phenomenal talent. Uh, he's been injured, unfortunately, as well. But just the team in general, that, that's my main reasoning there. I think he's just going to get the volume. He's going to explode. He's going to. This is the year they they cut him loose. They have to. It's a contract year. He has to do something this year. Here, his, his career is done if he doesn't thrive this year. It's do or die him for his career this year. He has to thrive. This is it. The end of the line. <laughs> yeah, so. out of here. Okay, quick rapid fire here. Um, anything that Dalvin Cook doesn't finish a season, you know, if you have to say I got to draft his handcuff every time I draft, just don't draft that running back. Yeah. Every time there's a conversation with Dalvin Cook, he's top five right now in PPR and, and on the sheep rankings. There's always that talk. I got to get Madison. I'm just going to get Madison. How about you just draft a better running back and just get <laughs> Madison later? Then you got two running back ones when Cook goes down, which is guaranteed to go down. He's guaranteed to miss three games. That's what you're getting when you sign on to Dalvin Cook in round one. Guaranteed to miss three to four games without a doubt. He's missing and, them. And, and if you're okay and you understand that and you're still willing to do it, that's that's fine. That's your thing. But like you say, yeah, why not grab someone that seems to be a little more of a sure thing? Of course, there's nothing guaranteed in football. No. But grab someone who's a little more of a sure thing or should be and then grab Madison later anyways. Yeah, I see. I don't want to spoil it here. We'll do maybe we'll do an overpriced, overrated running backs, overpriced, overrated wide receivers. <laughs> yeah, don't want to give too much. But another guy that sticks out to me like a sore thumb is DeAndre Swift. He's not a volume guy. He's on the Lions, and I know he's kind of primed in a position to succeed because there's no one there other than Williams. And I get it. But look at his volume. Look at his attempts. He doesn't get it done. And I just don't trust the the Lions with running backs. So Swift to me sitting eighth amongst running backs is ludicrous right now. You know, mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah, to put him ahead of Saquon is just ridiculous. Yeah, I don't see it. I'll, yeah. I'll agree on that one for sure. And one more that's really just, oh, it's digging into me, man. And I told you to avoid him last year. The volume wasn't going to be there with Tannehill throwing the ball. And he was top 10. And here, oh, let's talk about this. A.J. Brown, before we go here. Here's what blows my mind, okay? So I'm looking at the rankings. Traylon Brooks is the rookie that came in. And he's kind of that guy. And they've got Woods there too. But he's kind of the guy that, like a plug and play now for AJ Brown. He's a young rookie. Um, you know, he had some conditioning issues or something. I guess he was, I don't know the whole story, but there was some mini camp training and he felt dehydrated. I don't know the whole details, but I think he should be fine. Um, but Traylon Burks, a rookie that came in, he's sitting 41. Robert Woods is 43rd. Okay. Tennessee wide receivers, one and two, two and one. We don't know. It should be Woods is one, whatever. Fact of the matter is, A.J. Brown was ranked top 10 last year. I said, avoid him. He's on Tennessee. Their run first team. Avoid him. Finished 32nd last year in rankings. And now he's on the Eagles, where the number one wide receiver is still there, Devontae Smith. He was the one who's drafted very high draft capital on him. Peaked at, I think he peaked at, like, I got to take a look. It's 104 targets. Take a look at Waddle. Uh, well, not Waddle. What's his name? Uh, Devontae Smith. Peak uh, right here. 104 targets, 64 receptions. He was the one last year. Now, even if Jalen Hurts gets good, Let's say he gets really good this year. He throws more. Smith is still there, and he was the one, and he got 104 targets. In comes A.J. Brown. Now he's the one, and he's a top 10, top 11 wide receiver? How? It doesn't make sense. And you got Woods and Traylon Burks, who, again, like I said, A.J. Brown was a top 10 guy being on Tennessee. Why are these guys ranked 40th, but A.J. Brown was ranked top, top 10? Does this make? Do you see the logic here, how none of this makes sense? Absolutely. I know it's a lot, but but you get it. And again, that's how my brain is wired. Mathematically, it doesn't make sense for A.J. Brown to be a top 10 guy. No, I mean, look at what Hurts did last year even. He played almost the full season through just over 3,000 yards and only 16 touchdowns. Yeah. So how do you think he, he justifies the value here? I guess, you know, for fantasy for him, I actually like Hurts, again, because he finished top 10, because he makes it up on the rushing 
I mean, he yeah. does. How many rushing? He had what? He like, had almost 800 yards and 10 touchdowns. There you go. That's where he makes it up. So if he even throws a little bit more, maybe AJ Brown has some solid value and he goes to him. But his number one receiver last year peaked, peaked at, at that uh, 104 targets. And he's got good tight ends. Who does he have at tight ends here now? Um, who does he have? I think it's uh, my mind's not even working right now. Goddard is it? Yeah, Goddard. I mean, Goddard's going to get his fair share of volume as well. Then they got Jalen Rigor. Miles Sanders catches the ball a little bit out of the backfield. It's like, I don't know, man. A.J. Brown, to put him back in the top 10 makes me cringe, or top yeah. 11 for that matter. It, it's not justified. I mean, I don't care if Jalen Hurts improves a fair bit, you know, just a fair bit as a quarterback with his his yardage and his, his TD to interception ratio was horrible as well. 16 touchdowns, nine interceptions. He's, he's not that guy that's going to throw up a great wide receiver right now. He's not going to produce a top 10 wide receiver, in my opinion. I'm going to come back to this video. Tim, mark it in case I forget. Alec Pierce, wide receiver one, maybe two on the Colts, will beat A.J. Brown in fantasy points this year. That's my Ooh, bold baby. Prediction. We should do a bold prediction episode. <laughs> you just bold. did one. A bold prediction. Yeah, there you have it. All right, so that's it, Tim. I'm not going to go. There's way more overrated. Tyree Kill, I think, is overrated this year based on position. So many reasons why. I can't even, like, there's just so much going on. That's why you got to get the 16 round drafts, which I've linked it below. And let us know what show you're watching. I want to know, get your feedback. I want to go back to that. And this is fun, Tim. Thanks, man. I appreciate your overpriced players, man. It was good. And we agreed a lot today. We did. Absolutely. Even on your picks, we agreed a lot. Yeah. Yeah, because it's blatantly obvious. It's like blinkers <laughs> and red flags and mathematical numbers and equations popping up. Like, yeah. you know, like, wake up, guys. Wake up. Yep. Don't drink the Kool-Aid. All right. All right, Tim. We're out, man. Subscribe. Thumbs up. And, Tim, it's good to have you on the show with your picks. Good to be here, baby. All right, Lee, drop your comments for Tim. He appreciates them. He likes them, and he sleeps yeah. thinking about them. Oh, does, it take, does it take, like, two years off my life? Shave that crap, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, guys. We're out. We'll talk soon. Have a good one.